Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a solar charging system on your Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. So for those of you who are new to my channel, the purpose of my channel is to teach you how you can engineer your very perfect Tacoma. So smash that subscribe button. Do it now. So before we get into the nitty gritty detail of how everything works, I'll just show you the quick setup that I had when I had the rooftop tent and the cap. Here's where the solar panel was mounted. And here was the battery and the solar charge controller. Here's the triple 12 volt socket where I plug in my fridge and other electronics. This is typically what my bare minimum setup looks like with my fridge and my camping bin. Here's the setup that I currently have with the four wheel camper. Now let's go take a look inside. All right guys, quick tour before we actually get to the technical stuff. That's the bed over there. A little bit of bench seating over here. That's my camping bin. Water obviously. My fishing bucket, fishing pole, other bench. That's my little space heater. And that's the fridge right there. Getting to the charging system, all of that is actually under this cabinet here. So let's open that now. So as you can see, that's the deep cycle battery and that's the same exact solar charge controller. From that battery, it's directly connected to this fridge right here. And as you can see, I actually transferred the same exact triple socket from the cap setup. Oh yeah, here's a quick shot of the roof with the solar panel. So just to emphasize how much battery power this thing has, a fully charged deep cycle battery from my first setup can actually run my fridge for about 15 hours. And that's well through the evening. And for my second setup, the battery on the four wheel camper can run my fridge for 20 hours straight without having to recharge. So that's a lot of capacity guys. And we'll go through the math so that you guys can understand how I came up with these numbers. In this video, I'll be going through three main topics guys. The first one is how a whole solar charging system works. Number two is how I mounted everything from the solar panel to the battery. And number three is the proper math you'll need to calculate so that you can size your battery and your solar panel properly. So let's get to this. So why I think solar is awesome? It can power all your electronics indefinitely as long as you have the sun out. So I was able to power my fridge, charge my phone and all my other electronics with no problem for an unlimited amount of time as long as I have food, I'm good for my duration of the trip. The solar charging system is really an easy setup, guys. There's only three things you'll need to remember. The solar panel, your deep cycle battery, and your solar charge controller. That's it. And we'll go through the theory real quick. The sun provides energy to the solar panel. The solar panel converts that to roughly 17 volts of energy. In order to charge a 12 volt battery, we'll need to step it down so that's where the solar charge controller steps in. The solar charge controller acts like a battery charger and battery tender. It converts the 17 volts to a lower voltage that floats between 10.5 volts and 14.6 volts, depending on the current state of charge so that the battery does not overcharge. So from there, you treat the battery as normal. So I have a triple 12 volt plug right off of that battery, the first socket I used dedicated directly for powering my fridge. The second and third could be anything at this point for whatever purpose you have. For what I'm doing, I usually put a 5 volt USB charger to charge my phone and a small 150 watt inverter to charge my laptop if I need to. If you are planning on wiring up more than three things, I would suggest putting in a fuse box or a relay box to separate all the lines for both safety and convenience. It keeps your electronic devices separate 
so that if you blow a fuse, all your other connections are still working. I'll show you how I'll wire a relay box in another video, so make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Now I'm gonna go through how I mounted the equipment real quick. So in terms of the solar panel, I actually have that mounted on top of the Prince 2 rack system that I had. And what I liked about this Prince 2 rack system is that each cross beam is actually adjustable in the forward and backwards direction. So I was able to use some Z brackets and some quarter 20 uh, carriage bolts and nuts to lock the solar panel onto that roof rack system. So it's great. It's adjustable, it's versatile, and you can hold a lot of weight. So in terms of wiring, all the wires coming from that solar panel is then fed behind the cab and into the bed. And from the bed, it goes behind that battery and into the solar charge controller towards the rear of the bed itself. If you take a look at the solar charge controller, there are two sets of wires that go into it. There's a positive and negative for the solar panel, as well as the positive and negative for the battery. And from there, it goes into the battery. So the way I have the battery mounted, I pretty much just use carriage bolts. These are half inch 13 carriage bolts that I mounted ratchet straps and ratchet strap that battery down on top of that wheel well. Now as far as the solar charge controller goes, I pretty much just use double stick tape guys. And to further ensure that that thing sticks and doesn't go anywhere, I used adhesion promoter on the truck bed and on the back of the solar charge controller. And that thing is not going anywhere no matter how hot it is. And coming from the battery, here's that triple 12 volt socket that I was talking about earlier. So here's the breakdown of the cost for everything that I used here, guys. The solar panel is a 100 watt solar panel that I got from Amazon for only 80 bucks. The solar charge controller I got from Amazon as well, and that was only $16. And last but not least, which was the most expensive thing on the setup, was my deep cycle battery from Advanced Auto Parts. And luckily, every quarter or so, Advanced Auto Parts sends out like a 20, 25% off coupon. So I was able to pull one of those things online and get my deep cycle battery for only about a hundred bucks. So in total, we're looking at just a little bit over 200 bucks guys. And that's cheap. That's cheaper than a lot of generators as well as some of those compact batteries that you can get from like the Medic or any of these big brand companies. Here's a quick cost comparison guys from amazon.com. A Dometic battery that's 40 amp hours is $950. That's two thirds of the capacity of the 57.5 amp hour from the deep cycle battery at less than one quarter of the cost. Here's another one from Amazon. This big blue 250 watt hour is at about $200, less than half the capacity of the deep cycle battery from my first setup and you'll still need to buy a solar panel on top of that. So at this point, you basically have the top level knowledge of how a solar charging system works. If you wanna just start by copying my exact setup, all the materials that I use are going to be on my Amazon page. So check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. You can always add more battery or solar panels later. So it's not a big deal if you wanna just get started right away. From this point on, it is going to be super technical. So we're going to be crunching a lot of numbers and talking a little bit more about the science behind this whole thing. So stay tuned. So before we get deep into the math, we'll go through some of the terminologies that I'll be using. Just a quick warning guys, the following will be pretty damn boring, but I'll do my best to make this as interesting as possible. If you've ever played with electricity, I'm sure you already know what voltage and current is. But to recap, voltage is defined as the electrical potential. So a 12 volt battery has 12 volts. The current is the measure of electrical flow. 
and it's measured in amps. For both voltage and current, think of it like water. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. So voltage would be like water pressure, and current will be like water flow, just like how you see in the diagram here. Here's some more terminology, guys. Amp hour is the measure of how much current can flow in one hour. Watt or wattage is the measure of electrical power, so that's voltage times amps. Watt hour is the measure of maximum electrical power in one hour, so that's voltage times amp hour. Reserve capacity is the measure of how many minutes a battery can sustain 25 amps of current. So we take the minutes divided by 60 to make it an hour, and then we multiply that by 25 amps to make it into an amp hour. Bear with me, because we are almost done with the boring stuff. Now let's talk about batteries. Here's the deep cycle battery right from Advanced Auto, guys. As you can see, there is currently a 20% off coupon available, so you can get this battery even cheaper right now. When we scroll down on the specs, here's what we see. The reserve capacity is 140 minutes. Now let's convert that to amp hours. First, let's convert the minutes into hours. So that's 140 divided by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and what we get is 2.3 hours. Now let's multiply that by 25, because just as I said in the definition, reserve capacity is how much 25 amps can be sustained. So we get 57.5 amp hour. Now let's further convert that to watt hours by multiplying it by 12 volts because watt hour is voltage times hour and we get 690 watt hours. So let's remember those two numbers, 57.5 amp hours and 690 watt hours for the advanced auto deep cycle battery. Now let's compare that with my four wheel camper setup. Here's the battery spec that I pulled from Amazon. Very conveniently, we have the amp hour rating already of 79 amp hour. So let's convert that to watt hour by multiplying by 12 volts. And we get 948 watt hour. So here's the fridge that I have. You can find this on my Amazon page. If we scroll down, we see a wattage rating of 45 watts. See that? All these terms are making sense now, right? In order to figure out how long a battery can power this fridge, we just take our watt hour rating that we calculated earlier and divide by the 45 watts from the fridge. Doing simple math, we end up with 15.3 hours for the advanced auto battery and 21 hours for the four wheel camper battery. Now as far as sizing the solar panel, this is where you'll have to do another set of math, guys. So you have your solar panel, and when you buy it, there's usually a wattage rating. So the one that I got from Amazon is 100 watts. Take the amount of hours in the day where it can actually charge the battery. Let's say we have 12 hours of sun. So we multiply 100 by 12, and we come up with 1200 watt hours. Obviously, you're not gonna get 100% efficient with these solar panels, so Let's say we only get 90% efficiency because there's shade and we're moving or whatever. We multiply that 1200 watt hours by 90%. So 1200 times 0 0.9 is 1080 watt hours, which is actually more than how much the overall capacity of the battery is, and that's fine. If you want to be more exact, you can break it down even further and think about it as daytime versus nighttime use. So you'll take everything that you're going to use during the day and figure out your watt hours. And you do the same thing for what you're gonna use at night. So your solar panel should be sized to the total of day plus night consumption while taking the number of hours of daylight in your region. The battery should be sized to the nighttime consumption. And if we need more solar panels, we wire them in parallel so that's positive to positive and negative to negative. And if we need more battery, we also wire them in parallel. Keep in mind, the more panels you have, the more amperage 
you'll get. So make sure your solar charge controller can handle that. I know that was a lot of math guys, so I will have a Word document and a spreadsheet on my website shortly to help you out with these calculations. On my first setup with the cap, I actually have that battery completely independent from the electrical system of the rest of the truck. And you can do it that way too, so you don't have to deal with any type of battery drainage from your starter battery. But for my other setup, Four wheel camper setup has the battery actually connected to the alternator so while the truck is running it's actually charging both batteries which is good and there's a relay in between the secondary battery from the camper and the first battery from the engine so that relay actually shuts off the power between the two batteries so if both batteries go below a certain voltage I believe it's 12.5 or 12.2 once the battery goes below that voltage threshold it will actually separate them so that it can continue discharging the deep cycle battery without compromising the main starting battery here's another couple things to note guys so when you do wire the solar panel into the solar charge controller make sure you plug in the battery first before you plug in the solar charge controller. The energy being gathered from the solar panel will just fry the solar charge controller. And they do tell you that in the instruction manual of the solar charge controller that I used. So if you're planning on doing your own wiring guys, make sure you use the proper gauge of wires. And with this one I used the 10 gauge wire coming from the solar panel and plugging that into the solar charge controller. And the same 10 gauge wire is also what plugs into the battery. So with the math and the sizing, it will vary where you are located. Obviously, if you're gonna be camping more out on the beach or out closer to the equator or you're closer to Florida or whatever, you'll have more daylight to adjust the calculations properly. So that's pretty much all I got for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. And until next time, Peace out.